Exactly. All right. All right. So earlier this week, we spoke to the uh, Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, on the Highway Development and Maintenance Initiative, HDMI. And this is a conversation between Osage and I and the Minister on road concession plan. Take a listen. Welcome once again to uh, the breakfast. And of course, uh, our next uh, big conversation this morning is going to be on something called HDMI. A lot of people would uh, think of that, you know, with regards to electronics, but now it actually means Highway Development Management Initiative. And it is an initiative set up by the federal government of Nigeria in order to continue, of course, uh, to push forward with fixing Nigeria's highways. The government has uh, gone ahead, of course, uh, to set up uh, procurement procedures for 12 of Nigeria's federal highways in all geopolitical zones across the country. Uh, this morning, we're going to be speaking with the Honorable Minister of uh, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, who is joining us. Thank you so much for your time, and good morning. Thanks uh, um, for joining us on the program. Thanks for being here. Good morning. How are you? We are very well. And how are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. As good as can be. <laughs> okay, great <laughs> to have you. Okay, so we're, we're going to, you know, start with getting um, to understand exactly what the HDMI is all about and how this whole process is expected to work. Yes, uh, it's good you separated the, this HDMI in your intro. This is uh, not the uh, high-definition media interface which we use for our televisions. This is Highway Development Management Initiative. So the acronyms are just coincidental. But this initiative seeks to respond to many conversations in the Nigerian infrastructure space about the possibilities of a role for private sector, about the possibilities of financing for private sector. We've all had that before. Give it to PPP, let PPP do it, let private sector do it. So this whole thing is first a response and a challenge, as it is an opportunity. Let's see how big the market is. Let's see what the appetite of the private sector to move capital to roads. There is an appetite, perhaps, to move capital to portfolio investment. Who is ready to run the long distance race here for a longer time? So this, this is one of what it is. Uh, it's also uh, many possibilities. We estimate that uh, as much as over a trillion naira can come into these 12 roads, we estimate also that as much as 50,000 new jobs can be created here direct jobs, and possibly 200,000 plus spin-offs and indirect jobs can be created. Uh, so in terms of scope and width, it is the largest single, and I emphasize the word single, largest single highway concession plan ever undertaken on the continent of Africa in terms of scope, size, and length. All right. I'm happy you've explained, you know, pretty much the basics about how these concession will work. And, you know, like you mentioned, this is a response to the private-public partnership that we've all been clamoring for, saying, bring the private sector into this and let's make it easier, you know, for the government to build roads in the country. But one concern Nigerians have will be tolling, because they're asking, would the roads be tolled? Who would the money go to? And for how long would the tolling, you know, take place? Could you help us explain all that regarding the toll and the pricing? Okay, so there are many concerns and we will continue to deal with them and respond to them as much as possible. For those who are desirous of engaging with the process and getting more online and real-time information, I would advise them to go to the uh, web portal that has been opened and dedicated for this purpose. It is HTTP, HDMI, uh, Works and Housing, all written together, .gov uh, And it's also on the ministry's website. But really and truly, if we're expecting private sector to invest, 
we must expect that they are not investing money that is in their pockets alone. There may be some equity. They may have to go and raise some debt. All money, if they pay all money, they must they must find a means to pay to pay that money back. So essentially, one of the mechanisms for recovering the investments will be tools. Now, in terms of the 12 highway that we are talking about, before people start uh, uh, getting unnecessarily worried, it's, the 12 highways represent 1,930 something kilometers, 5.6% of 35,000 kilometers of federal road. So, if we are going to total only 5.6%, come on, we are touching a very small part. And the beautiful thing about it is that on almost all the areas where these roads are situated, there is an alternative. So you don't have to use the toll road if you don't want to. The tolling policy that we're working on will set out in more detail the guidelines and the principles that will govern tolling. So there's nothing to be overly afraid of. What we should be really excitedly looking forward to is the possibility of first-class highways, first-class services, services that commend that we should pay a reasonable fee to enjoy. That's what I would rather oh, be looking at. Okay, I, I ask about the toll because even with the existing, you know, tolls that we have on the roads, there are lots of complaints from Nigerians, and they see it as paying for the roads from their pockets, like the government or the concessioners collecting the money back that they've invested, but. Would well, then they be, uh, you know, at liberty to increase the toll price or decrease it at will? And if the concessioners fix the toll price, how do you hedge, you know, this against the investment? You see, all of the regulations about toll prices and all of that are going to be matters uh, of agreement and they'll be matters of regulation. So there, I can't think of any one business in the country uh, and, and any part of the civilized world that there is no sort of regulation for it, whether by law or by agency action. So, and there must be a place where there is a meeting of minds. For example, look, people have to index and change recently, uh, 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 what's it called, the tariff of uh, uh, electricity. So it took, a, there's a process to it. So you can't just wake up one day and change prices. So there will be process and governance around this. And those are some of the things that the tolling policy that I spoke to you about will address. All right. Is there any clarity on uh, the type of contracts uh, that we're speaking about here now with the uh, concessionaires? Is, is, uh, if you remember also the uh, Lecky toll gates, uh, after a while the Lagos State government had to step back in, you know, and uh, seemingly buy back uh, rights on that toll gate. So is there, you know, any contra clarity on the type of contract we're dealing with here uh, to ensure that there is no uh, setbacks in the future? Is there also any uh, clarity on the time at, with which, you know, this uh, um, uh, toll or these roads w would be fully in charge of these uh, public-private public partnership agreements? Okay. First thing to say is the Labour State incident that you refer to is a much better option where the parties cannot agree. There's a mechanism for peacefully disengaging. And that is a positive benchmark for the investment climate, not only of Lagos State, but also of Nigeria, that agreements will be followed. And so it was not a case of unilateral termination, get out of my country, get out of my state. And that is very, very positive for the Lagos State government. That has continued to define Defining the investment reputation of Lagos that if you enter into a, a, a contract, then you buy by it. And that's positive for this. Uh, the second thing to explain uh, I see that you yeah, enter a lot of information out to your viewers and I appreciate it in terms of agreements. We are not yet at agreement stage. We are just opened the portal now. We are at a, an RFQ stage. In private concessioning, there are many faces. This is the request for qualification stage. First, let us 
she who and who wants to participate? What experience are you bringing? What's your qualification? Should we hand over a room to you? Who are your technical partners? Who are your financial partners? What kind of financial muscle do you have behind you? Are you just a speculator trying to waste our time? We have just opened that phase. That phase will run through till I think the end of May this year. We want to make it short and sharp. From then, we will go to expressions of interest, uh, evaluation of technical and financial bids, and then we'll be looking at competitiveness. If there is now a successful bid, this is how concessions work. The fact that you have a preferred bidder, usually you have a preferred bidder, that's the person who put perhaps the best bid forward. You then have also a reserve bidder. That's probably the person you will say who came second. Then you go into negotiations with them. And that's when real contracting work starts. So the fact that you have a preferred bidder and a reserve bidder doesn't mean you have a contract. You just have the best two bids. Now, if you can't close a deal with the first bidder, you go to the second one. If you can't close a deal, then that transaction probably cannot go forward again, and you re-advertise it and start again. So we are not yet at contract stage. So let's be very clear. That is going to take a few more weeks and months. All right. So, still talking about the bidding. There's been concerns about lobbying, right? In previous time, there's been lots of queries, probes, investigations into how government contracts are awarded and things like this. And about how people, you know, there's been claims of politicians giving contracts to friends, family, and all of that, you know, allegations that, that come up. But on, on Monday, March 20, 29th, you mentioned in a press release that it, it, that wouldn't be happening this time with the HDMI, and that anything personal through you, through your staff, that we wouldn't be seeing that, and you were trying to assure Nigerians, you know, of the transparency. So I want, I want to get you, you know, to say this to Nigerians, if you're truly assuring of strict compliance to the online process. You know what? Um, the reason I'm talking to Plus TV is that I hold the view that this is a very, very responsible media organization. And that said, um, I think that we shouldn't be having this conversation at all. I will say what you want me to say, but we shouldn't be having this conversation. Uh, I'm glad you said that there are allegations. So, and I don't think that on a child's wedding day, on, a, on his graduation day, we should be talking about some things he was alleged to have done when he was a baby. But let me say once again that we have done all of what we have done on this transaction in the public space, on the global uh, internet space, and many people running into thousands have participated. So we have nothing to keep under the table. We will not entertain anything under the table, this process. And that's why we have taken pains and costs to also open a dedicated portal for it, so that there's a digital footprint for everything that we intend to do here. Okay. That is as much assurance as I would continue to give. Okay, and uh, we'd we'll like to also go deeper with regards assurance now. There's uh, a lot of other angles that we would bring up, but, you know, there's also, you know, something that I, be, I feel, you know, Nigerians would mention, um, and that is uh, continuity. Uh, the current administration um, is, of course, going to be wrapping up in 2023. The one thing that the current government has continuously mentioned is that, you know, they would continue projects. You know, some of the projects from the previous administration, they, you know, took over and continued and finished. Um, and, of course, we would give them kudos for that, you know. So can you also assure Nigerians with regards continuity beyond the current administration and, um, you know, in the next couple of years that these projects will continue, they will be finished regardless of who is in government, and Nigerians will be able to enjoy the benefits of these uh, contracts? Well, you're asking me to predict what will happen. I can only tell you what I expect, how I expect reasonable people to uh, we inherited government from a different party. We inherited projects that they commenced. And we were very clear in our minds, we had no ego issues, that these projects did not belong to any political party. They belonged to the Nigerian people. So we, we make no apology for 
undertaking to finish them and we are, we are rapidly progressing many of them. We completed some, we're doing more. And we would expect that uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, maturity that should come into governance. Although, I mean, the question to then ask yourself also is that the ability of these projects and initiatives to continue will depend on how the listening public choose to vote when the time comes in 2023. If they want to see more of this, then they should vote for the people who started them because they understand it better. That would be a choice that they will have to make down the line. Yeah, but, but, but you know what? What I um, also would like you know you to also uh, mention is you know the legal frameworks surrounding this, regardless of who was in government, regardless of you know if this current administration and you know um, and its team continue. Um, but are there legal frameworks that would protect the contract and ensure that it will continue um, uh, beyond you know 2023? Look. Um as I've said, by the time we conclude all of this, we'll be putting into place contracts if we can negotiate one successfully with each of the successful bidders on the 12 lots that we have advertised. And once those contracts are concluded and signed, they define the legal relationship between the parties as to what is expected of each side to do. And those legal relationships uh, do not respect any individual acts of indiscretion. Uh, and in an environment where there is law and order as there is in Nigeria, then there will be consequences for non-compliance. Okay, I, I want us to touch base on these beaders and the private entities who would be beaden to get these contracts to build the highways across Nigeria. What sort of qualities is the federal government looking for in a, in a concessioner, in a private firm that would be successful, you know, to execute these contracts? Well, we don't know who is going to bid. We're not going to preempt who bids. We're going to just wait and see what comes onto the portal. And when it's time to close the portal to evaluate, we'll see what is inside. Uh, but uh, perhaps by way of uh, uh, elucidation, what we expect to see are teams. You see, on every highway corridor, there's a lot of activities going on there. There's advertising going on there. There's towing vehicle activity going on there. There's some sort of emergency service being provided. There is a retail business of food and uh, agricultural products also going on on the same highways. There are canteens and eateries and some suboptimal rest places on the entire highway. So we expect to see that an interested participant will probably begin to talk to some of these businesses in their own structured way, bring them into a larger team, use his own business leverage. So we expect to see teams possibly come with their pavement management company. That's a company that will look after the road, maybe a construction company. We expect to see a team come with their own catering, rest house, uh, tourism, and uh, entertainment uh, partner. We expect to see, hopefully, a team come with their lane marking specialists, their toll collection specialists. We expect to see them maybe come with their health practitioner partners who will run the ambulance service on their route. We expect to see them come with their partner on towing vehicle service, who will run towing or breakdown of vehicles. We expect to see them come in possibly with people who will manage or construct way bridges, those who will build rest houses. We expect to see them engage with those who may provide cooling and refrigerated uh, facilities for all the farmers in the community who vend uh, fresh agro-produce that we sometimes all pack by the way to purchase. So we expect to see small businesses evolve into larger groups. We expect to see informal businesses become more formalized and more structured and able to leverage more capital to expand their services and grow and employ more people. Okay. Uh, w when I asked, I, I was actually talking about your evaluation metrics. 
I mean, when people bid for the contract, what would the federal government be looking out for, for, you know, entities that they would say are successful or they'll make it to the final stages? Would you be looking at cost? Would you be looking at past work? Please go ahead. I to that earlier portion of my response to you. What have you done before? Who is your banking partner? Who is your financing partner? Where is your money coming from? Have you done this before? Who are the people in your team? Those are the, the, the technical supports that you have or that you can leverage, that you show us. Those are the things that I expect that the, the technical team that will be doing the bid evaluation and the uh, qualification uh, entries will be looking to see. And they will be led by the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, which is a statutory body responsible for undertaking this kind of things on behalf of the federal government. Okay. okay. Also, for the major contracts we've seen executed in Nigeria, they're either, you know, outsourced to uh, Chinese companies, the recent, you know, Port Harcourt refinery, you know, outsourced to an Italian company, you know, and things like that. But I believe that we have graduates of, you know, engineering, you know, mechanical construction and all of that in our, in our tertiary schools. We have skilled people in Nigeria who specialize in these things. Would there be uh, some sort of, you know, preference given to local people, local contractors, Nigerians, especially in executing these projects? You, you see, I... I, I try to avoid generalizations, but let me start by saying, yes, we want to see Nigerian enterprise, but in a global world, you cannot lock your door to anything that is positive and developmentally uh, helpful. So we also have executive orders, orders five and seven, that seek to promote the participation of uh, Nigerians and local capacity wherever they are able. But that said, you must also understand that the developmental state of our economy uh, in those places where we seek uh, international and collaboration are in places where either you are dealing with original equipment manufacturers, there is no company in Nigeria, for example, that makes aircraft. Uh, there is no company that I know that makes certain kinds of uh, uh, construction equipment and those kind of things. Then when you are looking also at the, um, at the kind of capital that you need to invest on a long-term basis, how many banks will give you 25 years money? at what interest rate. So if your capital is coming from outside, it is possible that some of the people who are bringing that capital are also people who are from outside. The rules about doing business in Nigeria, about registering in Nigeria and all of that, are rules that we are going to follow. But that said, I mean, uh, capital is moving across different parts of the world, uh, irrespective of uh, the need to protect Local, local economy. What you want to see is money coming. You want to see capacity coming. You want to see expertise coming because that is where the local people can really then benefit if they don't already have those capacities. All right. I, I would like, um, you know, moving away from contracts now, let's also talk about something uh, that has created conversations uh, a lot in the last few months or years, and that is security. Uh, we, you know, Nigerians would be excited about building uh, new and better highways across the country, all geopolitical zones. Uh, but, you know, can, can you share a little bit on how the government also is going to ensure um, and would continue to take uh, steps to ensure that the security of these highways is uh, very paramount? The Abuja Kaduna has been, you know, a major problem uh, in the last uh, few months or even years. And, and so is security also one of the things that is, you know, being, you know, highly looked into? You know, um, I, I am not in a ministry responsible for security in that sense. But I will also say that I subscribe 
to the views that while it is a matter for concern, we, uh, those of us in the public space, and that includes the media, will be very, very circumspect and careful about how we continue to report the level of security in Nigeria. It is legitimate to be concerned about it, but we must be very, very careful and circumspect because we do a lot of damage. So let's go to that Abuja uh, Kaduna road that you talk about. Yes, there have been reported challenges there, but the way we continue about this without actually going there, probably suggests that nothing is happening there. That is a road that some people cannot but pass. They must pass it every day in order to end their livelihood. So it's not an abandoned road. There are security issues here and right there. They're being dealt with. And is there any highway in this country that has totally shut down because it has take, taken over by, by, by uh, uh, some criminal element? Certainly not. And even on our most municipal highways in our neighborhoods, crime does happen. And I think that we should, it's important to report it. It is important to get justice for victims and to, get, uh, to, to ensure that justice is served for criminals as well. But again, this is now a global TV space. We need to be much more accurate about what we're doing. We need to be much more defining about what we're doing uh, so that we don't also scare people away from our country. Because even in people places that have much more security challenges, business is going on there. Business is going on, and I say that with a lot of experience behind me. Well, it's, it's not in any it's way to... to uh, going on there. So yeah. we need to be very careful. Yeah, absolutely, and it's not in any way to uh, uh, paint a, a negative picture. Um, it's just, of course, the conversation we're having now is because we you know, would like you to you know, speak on behalf of the government and assure Nigerians that these things are being looked into and they will be taken care of. And, you know, there's no, you know, stone that will be left un un unturned to ensure that these, you know, this contract is uh, successful and that Nigerians can travel, you know, freely and enjoy the benefits of these um, um, agreements and these contracts by the uh, Nigerian government. And that's why, you know, we're, you know, bringing up some of these concerns uh, because they will come up at some point. Um, um, another thing, you know, and I hope that you can speak on this also, is, you know, the previous contracts that have been signed uh, with fixing those roads, it's, it's uh, one of the news reports that I looked into yesterday, uh, the Enugu Port Harcourt, for example, you know, that, are those contracts still running or would they be cancelled when this one takes, um, 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 uh, kick, is started, rather? Okay. That's a very good question that, that I afford me the opportunity to respond to. So uh, at one of the uh, interactions we had recently with the media, uh, the, some people went away with the opinion that, oh, uh, we were looking for money just to construct the road. The truth is that most of these roads are either under a current contract, some of them are just finishing, some of them are about to be finished. So, and that's why I said, when we see the request for qualifications, then we are going to go into negotiations with the preferred and reserved bidders, as the case may be. These are the hard questions that are going to occur. How much are you offering? Will you pay off the existing liabilities to the contractor and take it? Are you taking it as is? Are you taking it with conditions? Those are matters of negotiation on each one. There are some that need fresh investment to come in. There are some that have just been freshly finished. So you are taking a brand new asset. And all of those, that's why we ask all of the interested persons, go and undertake some survey of the road you are bidding for. We have done our own surveys. We have put as many photographs and as many details on the portal as possible to help you. We have done traffic counts and we have shared that data. We have done a gazette on each of the roads so that you know what the corridor is. But it is still helpful to go and take a visual by yourself to see what you are actually buying or you are bidding okay. for. Um, since we're talking about uh, ongoing projects, uh, about the second Niger Bridge, um, what will be the features of this and uh, how soon can we expect it to be completed? 
The second Niger Bridge is a complementary bridge to the old River Niger Bridge, which was built, I think, in 1956 or so. Uh, and um, it would uh, also run across the River Niger and link Delta State from Asaba to Anambra State uh, from Onecha. So it is a crossing of the east of Nigeria to the west of Nigeria through the Niger Delta. Uh, completion time is sometime in 2022. We lost some time last year because of COVID and some of the uh, protests about uh, SARS, but uh, we're clearing that back uh, and uh, we will deliver that in 2022. All right. Uh, um, sounds, you know, like um, a word that a lot of Nigerians will be excited um, about. Um, and also, you know, uh, quickly also clarify on the time when some of these uh, projects, uh, according to your predictions, might be concluded. Like what are which projects are you talking about? Uh, the ones that we're talking about, the 12 of them that are, you know, are going to be, uh, uh, that there's going to be bidding for. Is there a time frame that the government has set? As I said, is that the first phase for the request for qualifications, the portal will close at the end of May. So let me give you an example. For the uh, Lekki Highway, that was a process that took 2005, I think was when we signed the agreement. Uh, construction didn't start until 2010. So this is how long PPPs can take. Some can take six months, some can take two years, some can take longer. You don't write the rule of prescription, but you want to do it as quickly as possible. You want to conclude your contracts at a good time because from contracts then you go to financial close. Financial close is where the rubber meets the road. Can you raise the money? And you want to do all of that at a time when it is good for investment. So if we had closed the contract last year in the midst of COVID, it was unlikely, <coughs> excuse me, it was unlikely that given the economic situation that then ensued across the world, that anybody would finance anything. So there would have been no financial close. So again, you want the time when you go to the market. Okay. You, right. you mentioned, you know, in previous interviews that this Highway Development and Management Initiative, HDMI, will be executed in two parts. You mentioned the value-added concessions, uh, UAC, and the unbundled assets pro uh, approvals, UAA. Uh, could you tell us the difference between that and how they would run? Okay, so the uh, value-added concession is a concessioning of the entire right of way to a consortium, and I've defined that consortium as possibly financial institutions, uh, road uh, com construction companies, uh, uh, medical consortium, all of that coming together. I'm not prescribing anything, I'm just describing. But, and that's heavy lifting, taking over maybe 100 kilometers of road network, that's a lot of investment. And some people may not have the appetite and the capacity for that. So the unbundled assets approval allow you on some other uh, level to just apply for smaller things. Okay, I want to run the way bridge here. I want to run the towing service here. I just want to do a rest house. I don't want the whole route. Those are also the commercial opportunities on any route. I want to run... Uh, 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 tooling service here. Okay, how are you going to do yours? Let's see. So you are not taking so many entire corridor. So that's the difference. Okay. All uh, right. Think, so just uh, uh, lastly, uh, uh, just to wrap up, uh, you know, this project that you know, is about to kickstart in in Nigeria. What what would you say would be you know the the high points, you know, benefits that Nigerians should expect? when, you know, these projects are eventually completed? The high point is uh, infrastructure uh, delivery, infrastructure maintenance, employment creation, uh, 
business development, uh, improved quality of service, improved quality of life, uh, a better experience on our highways generally, and uh, a feel good factor about about ourselves generally. Okay. All right. All right. And of course, I hope uh, the conversations also include uh, uh, maintenance uh, for the highways as long as, uh, as for many, many years uh, to come, they continue to, of course, uh, be responsible for the maintenance of these highways, hmm. um, I believe. Yes, indeed. Um, and also, just, just to quickly, you know, get a sense of the statistics, you know, when you did your, you know, analysis, you know, feasibility studies, or just what numbers did you find in terms of, you know, how much jobs will be created, you know, when these roads, are, you know, begin construction? Okay, very quickly, let me say that uh, one of the reasons why it kept popping up in my own view that a construction company as a partner in that consortium would be useful is because maintenance is a very big issue for us. Uh, and so if you have a construction company in that, in that group, then you, but it doesn't mean that you cannot contract out if you don't have one. You can still employ one. But construct maintenance is going to be very, very uh, big for us. There's already a there's already a national uh, infrastructure maintenance policy, and these are also ties in into program that will implement that policy. In terms of jobs, as I said, if we conclude on all the twelve. We expect to see an investment in the order of over a trillion naira. Uh, we also expect to see uh, direct jobs in the order of about 50,000 new direct jobs and uh, possibly 50,000 uh, indirect jobs across the span of 1,000 plus kilometers and businesses on them. So thank you very much, Minister of Works and Housing, Babatsunde Fashala, for coming on the breakfast this morning. And uh, we hope that um, as much information that, you know, is, um, or still needs uh, to get across to Nigerians, we can have further interviews on uh, this uh, HDMI that we, of course, uh, just spoke about. Stay with us here on PLOS TV Africa. We'll be back after this short break.